You know how Rasmus Lardorf, that's the, the creator of PHP, he has this anecdote that he tells on conferences. And then some idiot wrote a templating system for my templating system. And that's when I knew I had completely failed. And he tells this story as a way to, to illustrate that PHP definitely didn't start out as a programming language. It evolved over time. It's definitely not a templating engine anymore. And you know, a year and a half ago, I decided to follow my own advice and think outside the box. I kind of came up with a new programming language. It all depends, of course, on whether you consider HTML to be a programming language, because that's what I did. I created a new templating engine for PHP. Uh, but the thing has a lexer, a parser, a compiler, so as far as I'm concerned, it's a simple, but it yes, it is a programming language. Now, why would anyone in their right mind do this? It's 2025, well, 2024, when I started working on this. There are very good templating languages out there. There's Blade, there's Twig, there's Latte, there are a couple of other smaller ones. Why would I do that? Except for the challenge, of course. Well, there, there was a reason for it. If you've been following along on this channel, you might know that a couple years ago we started building a framework for PHP. And it all started out as a small educational project, but then you decided that you wanted it to be something more. People started contributing on GitHub and before I knew it, it became a real thing. That's Tempest today. It's still kind of a work in progress. There is already so much here and it's super cool to see the project evolve. People are actually using it for real things now. And that's, that's, just, that's just awesome to see. So a little bit over a year ago, uh, Tempest had a templating engine. It was really bare bones. It was just PHP basically. And I had to stop and ask the question, where do I want this to go? Tempest is becoming a real thing. I don't really want people to write PHP because as history has shown, uh, PHP might not be the greatest templating language of all times. Hence, people started writing their own. And so I looked at the existing options out there. For me, there were three realistic options, Latte, Twig and Blade. All of them are really great templating engines, but all of them also had uh, some kind of problem. With Blade, it's the fact that it's not really a standalone thing. It's heavily tied to Laravel. If you want to pull in Blade, you pull in half of the framework, which is kind of weird to pull in the whole of Laravel just to be able to render some templates in another framework. But the thing I like about Blade is that it's very close to PHP. It feels familiar. Then there's Twig, which is made to be totally standalone, which is really great. But Twig just feels so far from PHP that it, it just it, it didn't fit for me. Being used to Blade, I, I don't really like Twig. And I know that's a subjective matter, but hey, I'm, I'm building a subjective framework here. So uh, there's nothing against Twig, so to speak, but I just, I, 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 it doesn't work for me. It's not what I expect from a templating engine. Then there's Latte. Latte is a lot smaller. It's, it's part of the net framework. There were some very interesting parts, but there was one specific feature I really needed, view components inspired by Blade, which in fact was inspired by Blade X, which I helped create. I had this core feature that I really needed to be in my templating engine and it was missing from Latte. So that was my starting point, right? There's PHP, there's Blade, there's Twig, there's Latte and uh, each of them had their drawbacks. Each of them are great templating engines except for PHP maybe. But, you know, I just, it, it wasn't what I wanted. I thought back of that old video I did where I was talking about thinking outside the box and I challenged myself and I was like, okay, let's imagine we're starting from a clean slate. What would be the perfect templating engine for me? And there are a couple of requirements. The first and the most important one is that it should feel familiar. And this is why I don't like Twig, right? It doesn't, it's a language on its own, but I wanted this templating engine to feel familiar. Kind of like Blade. Blade feels familiar to PHP. But then I was thinking about other templating engines, or not necessarily templating engines, but front-end frameworks, which feel even more natural to me. And that's because, well, they embrace the most OG templating language of all, and that's HTML. So here we had Blade, which was leaning very much to the PHP side. We had Twig, which was a language on its own. We had Latte with a couple of things missing. And then I realized, well, what if I made a templating language in PHP that feels a lot like HTML? Because everyone knows HTML. It feels very familiar. And for me, that was good enough a reason to dive into the project and see whether it was actually a viable. I started drafting some, some specs for this new language. And, and you know, it felt very comfortable to me. 
it felt like, yeah, this is exactly what I expect from a templating language. And if you see the syntax, you you would probably say that it looks a lot like uh, Vue. There is some React in there as well with the Vue components, right? You know, the more I worked on this, the more I realized, yes, this, this, this is what I like. So I was like, okay, why not explore this a little bit more? And, you know, building a, a language, let's, let's say templating a language just to not angry anyone in the comments about whether it's a programming language or not, but to build a new language. It involves a lot of steps, but you know, at its core, I wrote about this a couple months ago, at its core, it's nothing more than text processing. You go from a text file in a certain language and translate it to another language. In my case, that's that's my new syntax, which feels very similar to HTML, converted to PHP, which is the compiled version, and then PHP renders it under the hood. So the starting point for me was HTML, which was already a quite a big shortcut, because instead of languages like Twig or Blade, I already had a lexer and parser available. On top of that, PHP 804 was adding a, a brand new DOM parser, HTML5 compliant, which was super fast. It was written in Rust and then embedded in PHP somehow. And that was like a huge part of the work already done. Except <laughs> there is one problem. My new language isn't spec compliant. In fact, it's not even spec compliant with XML, which of course is fine because it compiles to valid HTML in the end anyway. There are things like custom tags in, in the head element, which apparently isn't allowed with HTML5. There is only a number of allowed tags in the head. So if you try to, for example, um, add a slot in the head of your HTML document, well, that doesn't work with an HTML parser. Actually, the HTML spec is really weird. It will close the head, it will start the body, and then everything that comes after it will be parsed at the body. It's very weird. There are no self-closing tags in XML even. So, you know, I could, I could go two ways, basically. I could take my language, I could transpile that to valid HTML, which wasn't entirely impossible, and then use that valid HTML, parse it, use that parsed DOM tree to further do whatever the templating engine should be doing. But, you know, transpiling from my language to HTML, I tried it, it wasn't fun. There's a lot of text processing involved with regex. And you know, I do like regex, I did another video about that. But it just didn't feel right. So I was like, how difficult can it be? I'll make my own Lexer and Parser for uh, uh, my language, parse it to some kind of DOM that isn't really compliant with the HTML5 spec, but that's okay because I will compile it to valid HTML5. There was a big downside to that approach though, because writing your own Lexer and Parser in PHP, well, it's not as performant as writing it in Rust, which is what the built-in PHP HTML5 library was doing. Now, performance is a tricky thing because all of these templates, they are parsed and then compiled into a PHP file and that PHP file is cached. So anything that happens before the caching phase, you could say doesn't really matter. And in a way it doesn't, but actually it kind of does because whenever you change a template during development, you don't want to wait half a second or even a second for it to recompile, right? So while for production everything is cached and it doesn't matter, the performance for developer experience still matters. So I was okay with not having Rust level speeds, that was fine, but I also couldn't afford to wait half a second or a second for a template to render. Now luckily there is a DOM parser written in PHP, it's called uh, Masterminds HTML5 PHP and this was used by many projects before PHP actually got HTML5 support a year ago. This was a library that was pretty fast, fast enough to be usable, to be able to parse an HTML document in a couple of milliseconds basically. So I had a target to work towards and so for my first iteration I think my, my parser took 600 milliseconds to parse a kind of big template file and the mastermind version took 30 milliseconds so I was like okay I need to optimize a little bit here. At this point most of the optimizations come from optimizing the lexer and the parser and it comes down to things like not using closures or functions but just inlining code uh, to not rely on class variables but instead use inline variables stuff like that. It's, it's pretty low level but it actually makes a pretty high impact and I got it to a point where my parser was faster 
than Masterminds parser, which makes sense because Masterminds is following uh, the HTML5 spec and it includes a lot more rules to take into account. I could just uh, not care about those and just make an optimized version for what I wanted to do. And this was a really, really interesting problem to solve. By the end, I think I, I did think outside of the box quite a lot, but I'm really happy with the result. I've been using it for a year now, this templating engine, and you know, I'm biased, I know that, but it feels so natural. It feels like what I want from a templating engine, and maybe some other people will enjoy it as well. The thing is, there is still a pretty important missing aspect here, because building a, a new language is only the first step. Whether a language succeeds or not also depends heavily on the support it gets from the surrounding tools and the ecosystem. A good example is IDE support. It's all nice to be able to compile a blob of text in your language to another language that actually runs on a PHP server. Uh, but if you want your language to be usable, yeah, you know, you need some auto-completion support, right? You need some static insights into it. And that's still work in progress. But I'm super excited about it because there is is in fact someone helping me with um, building a PHP Storm plugin for it. And I also know that Mago support is coming pretty soon, or it might already be here depending on when you watch this video. And so that's really nice to see that other people are picking up on it as well, and, and it might actually become a real thing. So yeah, that's one of these projects I've been working on for the past year. And uh, there is still a long way to go. But if you're watching this video and if you are intrigued by it, I want to give you some pointers on where you can go next to read more about it. There is, of course, a documentation where you can learn a bit more about this language. There is also the GitHub repository for Tempest where you can report issues if you run into any. There is one for the PHP Storm plugin as well. If you want to use it, you can already do so today and try it out. There is a lot of work to be done there. So yeah, I wanted to make this video um, to let you know that, that Tempest View is a thing and it was a really cool project to work on. And I hope you, you might get some value out of it yourself as well. All of that being said, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave a like as well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.